right? And what better place to start than right here in New Jersey? So this is our sky in New Jersey, somewhere in the countryside where there's a bit less light pollution or extra light than there is in Jersey City. And of course, we can see a lot of stars. And every star that you can see right now is inside our galaxy, inside the Milky Way. And they're only a tiny fraction of all the stars. In total, our galaxy has 250 billion stars in it. So there's a lot of really cool stuff for us to explore. So are you all ready to go? Yeah. All right, everyone, can I get a countdown for liftoff in five? Four, three, two, one, blast off. All right, everyone, here we go. Say goodbye to Liberty Science Center. All right, everyone, so we have officially left Earth right now. We can see this is real satellite images of Earth, but we're really interested and going really, really far away. So let's go ahead and take a look at our whole solar system. All right, so our solar system is everything that goes around the sun. The sun is a small star and it's really, really strong. It holds Earth, it holds on to the other planets. There are eight planets in total, which we can see right here, the orbits. Now, Earth is right here. So we came from all the way over here, and this blue line shows our path around the sun. So as the Earth and the other planets goes around the sun, it looks something like this. Now there's other stuff in our solar system too, not just the planets. We've got asteroids, big space rocks, there's moons of course, like our moon, and there are moons around other planets as well. But let's talk about the planets first. So we've got our inner solar system here, those are rocky planets, more similar to Earth. And then out here is the outer solar system. We've got our gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter and our ice giants like Uranus and Neptune. And we're gonna visit the outer solar system a little later, but let's start with these inner planets. So does anyone know which this planet is right here, the one that is closest to the sun? All right, I heard a lot of you say it. It is Mercury. That is the smallest planet in our solar system. Now, Mercury is pretty hot, so we're not going to visit it today. It wouldn't be super pleasant. Now, what about this planet? What's the next planet? Venus. All right, I heard a lot of you answer Venus. You are right. It is Venus. Now, Venus is actually hotter than Mercury. Even though it's farther away from the sun, Venus has an atmosphere, like a gas blanket, similar to the one we have on Earth, but just really, really thick. So it's got a really thick blanket. So it's so hot that it's about 900 degrees on the surface of Venus. No matter what day it is, no matter what time of year, time of day, anything like that, it is always about 900 degrees. So that's not a place that we want to visit today. It wouldn't be very fun. What about this planet? You all got it, that is Mars. Now, is Mars colder or hotter than the Earth? Colder, very good. It is colder because it is farther from the sun and it doesn't really have a thick blanket. So we can go to Mars. We do have to bundle up a little bit. Do you all wanna to go to Mars? Yeah. Awesome, let's head there now. All right, so Mars is the outermost rocky planet. It's similar to Earth in some ways, just a lot colder. It's also smaller. So Mars is about half the size of Earth across. Now, despite being pretty small, Mars has one of the most impressive features in our solar system. We're looking at it right here. This is called the Mariner Valley, or Valles Marineris. It is a canyon that is 3,000 miles long. It is absolutely huge. If you put this canyon on Earth, it would stretch from New York all the way to California. So we're gonna see what it would be like if we could actually drive through the Mariner Valley right now. Now, you might notice there's no trees, there's no water, anything like that on the surface of Mars. As far as we know, there is no life on Mars. 
but there used to be water. And that's maybe what caused some of the shape of this canyon. There used to be water on Mars when it was a little bit warmer, but there isn't anymore. So even though you know we have things looking for life on Mars, a lot of it is looking for evidence that there used to be life when there was water on the surface before the planet got a little bit too cold. Now, of course, this is pretty cool driving through the Mariner Valley, but it would be even cooler if someone built a roller coaster in the Mariner Valley. Maybe in hundreds of years someone will, but until then, we can all see what it would be like today. Do you all want to ride a roller coaster through the Mariner Valley? Yeah. All right, everyone. Before our ride, I have a couple of announcements. The first one is, feel free to take pictures and videos of this, it's pretty cool. Next up, if you get dizzy or motion sick, just close your eyes and look down, it'll pass. And last but not least, feel free to stick up your hands and scream, this is a roller coaster after all. All right, everyone, are you ready? Yeah! Please enjoy your ride through the Mariner Valley. here and we are going to come back to see some of the large planets in our outer solar system but before we land again do you want to see what's outside of our solar system yeah! all right let's go ahead let's leave the solar system we'll leave the sun behind passing through the very edge of our solar system called the Oort cloud this is a big cloud of little bits of ice possibly made up of comets at the edges of our sun's domain. So if you go any farther into space, you are fully leaving the solar system, leaving behind the sun's influence. This is much farther away than even Pluto is from our sun. We are really far out there in space. And as we break through this cloud, we are inside the Milky Way galaxy. So there's a lot of stuff inside our galaxy, right? There's stars, 250 billion of them. There's black holes, and we will talk about that later. But there's something else that you may not have heard of. You might have. They're really cool, though, so we'll talk about them now. They're called nebulas. Nebulas are like big gas clouds in space. So we'll fly to our first nebula for today. This one is called the Orion Nebula. And it's actually in our night sky sometimes, in the constellation Orion. All right, so here it is. Now, this is thousands of light years away from us in the solar system. I think it's just a little over a thousand. That means it would take you a thousand years to reach this nebula, even if you could travel at the speed of light. So it is quite far away. And inside this big gas cloud, hundreds and hundreds of stars are being born. So we can actually see kind of what it looks like for a star to be born. Inside this big cloud of gas, 
little pockets of that gas start to stick together. They start to clump up. You can kind of think of it like a snowball. You've got this little clump right here, and as it's spinning, it's pulling in more and more stuff. That ball is getting bigger and bigger. As it pulls in more of that gas, mostly hydrogen and helium, it starts getting hotter and hotter until eventually the engine can turn on and make it a star. So that is how stars are born. They're basically big engines in space burning all of that gas that they just sucked up. Now, left around a newly formed star is this disk of even more gas. And outside in that disk, you can see little bits of gas starting to clump up as well. That is how the planets form. So out of this big disk around our sun, I think about four billion years ago, the Earth formed out of a little clump of all that stuff left behind by the star forming. So that is happening hundreds and hundreds of times over inside this nebula. And we can see it sometimes. We can see stars being born. We can take a look as the gas starts to clump up over time. So that's a pretty cool thing that we can see here. But it's not the only type of nebula. We call this one a stellar nebula or a star factory. But not all nebulas are forming stars. In fact, some of them are actually marking where there used to be a star, where a star died. So we're heading to the Crab Nebula, which is a pretty fun name. And unlike the Orion Nebula, this was left behind by a supernova, an exploding star. When really big stars die, much bigger than our sun, instead of kind of dying slowly over time, they explode. This explosion is bright enough sometimes that we can see it in our daytime sky. In fact, when this star exploded, we were able to witness it in the year 1054, when Chinese and Japanese astronomers actually saw a bright spot appear in our sky. Now, when these stars explode, they of course leave behind this nebula, we call them supernova remnants, but they'll also leave behind something else at the center. In this particular case, as the star exploded, the center collapsed into what we call a white dwarf. So what we're seeing now is actually a real picture of the Crab Nebula from the James Webb Space Telescope, which is pretty cool. Now, this thing that it collapsed into at the center of the nebula is called a pulsar, which is a spinning neutron star, a spinning dead star. And it looks like it's flashing because these two beams of light are sticking out of it. So as it spins, it passes in front of our telescopes and we can see that flashing. Now, in real life, this pulsar spins 30 times every second. So it's going really, really fast. To highlight just how powerful and cool this object is, it is about 1.4 times the mass of our sun. So it's got the same amount of 